Hi y'all, welcome to my shop. Today we're going to turn this cool little hot air balloon ornament. Uh, it's not my idea. I got this idea from uh, Bob Barkham's article in uh, October 2013, American Woodturner. Uh, one of the advantages belong to the American Association of Woodturners. And besides the uh, subscribe the magazine you get every other month. You get an electronic uh, magazine focused on the on wood turning fundamentals, uh, focused primarily on beginners. And that's just some of the, the advantages belong to AW. So I encourage you to to check it out. We're going to start with a, a piece of wood about four and a half inches uh, uh, square by about four and a half inches long. Most any kind of wood will uh, will, will do, especially if you're going to color it. Uh, you know, you don't care about the grain or anything else if you're going to color it with acrylic or uh, uh, metallic paint or something of that sort. And you'll also need a small piece about three quarters inch square by maybe two inches long for the gondola. So let's get started. On a piece this size, I could take this square and chuck it into my, my chuck and grab hold of it. But I, I don't feel as comfortable with that uh, because it's only holding it for uh, eight points. Uh, and this wood is a little bit is spalted, so it might be a little bit punky in, in spots, so it might not get the same even pressure. So I'm not going to go that route. I'm going to go it, do it the traditional way, and turn it between centers to get it round, and put a put a tenon on it because definitely you get so much more strength with with the uh, uh, pressure of that wood. Uh, up against the jaw chuck and have that nice square edge. Like a lot of my small spindle projects, I make a little storyboard. Uh, not that it's really necessary for one project, but it makes it a little easier if you're doing several. You can use this to make sure the blank is of approximate size. Uh, I'm going to first mark off my two and three quarter inches of where the top of the balloon is going to be. Then I'm going to go ahead and mark that with a parting cut to the out, outside, and that gives my eye something to follow, which I think is important. Go in maybe three eighths of an inch because I want to leave as much mass as possible down here while I'm hollowing. Uh, now I want to measure up about one third of the blank uh, for the widest part of the balloon. So that's this mark right here. And I don't want to touch that pencil mark. I've still got some rough edges here. Uh, I've still got to take back a little bit. But anyway, that gives me a place to start start uh, bringing back the top of my balloon. All right, anchor bevel, cut, ride the bevel, lift the handle so it starts cut. start down on this side. Before I go too much further, I want to go ahead and face this off. I want to make sure I've got a got a flat surface there. Bracing it with my finger and just kind of cutting in. Slightly chamfering down a little bit to where I'm going to center the drilling. Now I want to mark about three quarters of an inch because that's that's going to be how wide this balloon shape is going to be. So I'm going to simply lay that over here 
against this little tape measure I have on the side of my my lathe. Okay, so now we're going to mark mark that. So I'm going to use my 3 8 inch spindle gouge and start that shape down. And that will give me a, a beginning. And that shape's looking pretty good. I want to bring it down a little bit more from the edge here. I'm going to go ahead and drill in here how I think this spalting is going to make for an interesting looking balloon, even though I've got a few punky spots. It's going to take a little, little sanding. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and, and drill that out with a 5 8 inch Forstner bit. Stock. And we're ready to go ahead and drill. I want to go ahead and measure that uh, that depth. You want to drill to about it, no more than three sixteenths from the, what's going to be the end. Maybe back off a little bit at a quarter or so, but that'll give me a rough feel. So coming back from here, gosh, that means I'm going to have to actually extend the drill bit out a little bit. Okay, that's pretty close. Okay, so we're going to take our time. We're going to slow this down a little bit. No more than about 500. And we're just going to ease this in, taking out just a little bit of a uh, little bit of time, and then retracting it. pretty soft wood but I still don't want to go much more than a half an inch. Let's get a my wife's toothbrush here. Always keeping my hand on the Jacob's chuck as I retract it. Chuck, let's see if y'all can see. You can see that wall thickness if I measure it a little bit. Let's see if I can find my calipers. There's no real reason to measure this except to tell you how uh, thick it is, and it's just a bit below a quarter of an inch, which is a, makes this for a little heavy ornament. Nobody's going to look inside it, but you want to keep it as light as possible. So I'll go ahead and bring it down a little bit more. Get that speed up again, you know, somewhere 15, 16, 1700 maybe. Anchor, ride the bevel, lift the handle, and then direct the, the flute in the direction of the cut. 
Now I'm just going to face this off just a little bit, get rid of that extra ridge that I cut accidentally with those calipers. Trying to measure. Okay. Now it's simply a matter of, well there is a rough spot there. Hopefully I can sand that out. I think this spalting is going to be pretty. Now you can haul this with any number of different tools uh, that'll fit inside this this 5 8 which kind of limits you a little bit. Again, this is a shop-made tool out of a large um, Allen wrench. It's uh, 5 16 of an inch, uh, and it's considerably stouter, and it's got a little bit of a flat area on the bottom. So let's see, let's see how this does. Cutting on center, same way I'm going to tilt it down a little bit so as not to be too aggressive. This is a little heavier, 5 16 so let's see if it's a little less chatter, chatting, chattery. carefully and see how deep this is give me some feel for for the depth and I can tell I can go literally to the to the as deep as it'll go and I won't quite get to the top of the balloon so that that'll be safe it gives me a, a feel for what I'm where I'm cutting oh, I see a lot of stuff spinning off yeah, I had a feel there, feeling I had a hole here. This is so punky. I don't think it was that thin, but it just kind of blew out. Well, hmm. okay, I'm not going to, I don't think I'm going to bother to try to repair that. Now we'll go back with this to widen the walls, uh, the cavity a little bit more uh, using this part of the tip, which this does a little better at. Okay, so we're going to take our calipers and we can we can check here. I think y'all can. Y'all can see that. Checking for this gap, and it does pretty well down to about here, and it gets a little thick, stays thick, loosens up a little bit at the bottom. So what that tells me is the wall thickness is just a little bit over a quarter of an inch, five sixteenths of an inch maybe. Uh, so we can hollow it out just a bit more. We're not going to get crazy with it, but we'll take one more pass. Make sure we're cutting on center and being careful not to thin it out too much here. Uh, the other thing I did, I measured this, the outside, and I found that I've got it just a bit more than three quarters of an inch. Uh, 0.87, uh, more like seven eighths of an inch. So rather than take the wall down any on the inside here on the opening, we're going to scale this down a little bit. For a little better proportion. Okay, we're going to call that good and finish refining the outside shape here a little bit. The shape looks good. Uh, I just want to take it down just a little bit here where it's going to be above the gondola and then we're going to part down deeper here and bring this curve around a little bit. Let's try that. Again, lower the tool rest so we're cutting on center.
Now one little trick to make it look thinner than it actually is, is do a little bit of a taper near the mouth. I'm going to switch to a swept back detail gouge just right in here, just bring it back just a hair so it'll look thinner. And the rest we'll deal with with sandpaper. We're going to go ahead and take this down a little bit more before we start sanding. So I'm going to bring it down to, oh, maybe, maybe a half an inch. Come back, another half a part so the parting tool doesn't get too much friction in there. Switch back to our 3 8 inch detail gouge. Anchor, bevel. Okay, we're going to start sanding. I'm going to go through the various grits. Uh, Get rid of this mark, get rid of the tool mark, sand it down, and then we'll come back and part it off. Okay, I've got this sanded down to about 400. I'm actually going to do it with this really small skew. I think I can cut away from those fibers better. Let's see if I can do that left-handed. This is going to be scary because I am right-handed. Okay, having a little nib is better than uh, tearing out the fibers because I can sand this off quickly using sand this off quickly using a mandrel either on the lathe or uh, the drill press.